not trying to uh, do something that they don't like. But what we can do with this is we have these little toothbrushes that fit on the end of the finger as opposed to trying to use the stick. And then you can put the toothpaste on the brush and again you could open the mouth in much the same way that you already did holding this bone, the lower bones, and then brush the teeth gently. Yeah. And then we could give up after a while. <laughs> no, no, the other thing is, what's that? Where can I get those? Oh, I'm going to give you all one of these, but uh, most veterinarians have these, or um, a lot of pet supply stores will sell these as well. So, um, so this works much better than the long stick, and you're trying to hold the bones and hold the stick. <laughs> it's a mess. So you can put the animal approved um, toothpaste on there. And you can see now she's doing the redirected, I'm so disgusted with you behavior. And that's okay, you know, we're not going to keep at it. But the other thing is, this is why it's nice to make note of where the tartar accumulation occurs in your pet. Um, your vet should hopefully, or the tech working with them, should hopefully point out where the tartar accumulation is. I usually do point it out. Most of them, it seems to be the same spots. It's right in here, and it's right in here. But some pets accumulate it differently than others. So if I make note of where the accumulation most often occurs, then I can do a better job of just targeting those areas. Because it's not as though the mouse knows. Ralph doesn't have a brain that goes, hey, let's start accumulating when they don't brush us. Um, it'll still accumulate in the same spots. So you could go for the same areas each time. So just use a little paste, brush those areas, and then um, be done with it from there.